eyes and go to Jesus. He will embrace me in his arms, in the arms of Christ my Savior. Okay, Robert says we're running. Beg your pardon? I didn't see your mic. Um, okay, we started last week on, on our prayers. I, I wanted, let me say this before I get started tonight. I ordered, this is the old book by Don DeWelt. I ordered another one. And uh, it came, and I was very pleased. Um, it's been updated. Of course, Don died a long time ago. But I think it was the assistant edit editor of College Press has, uh, has updated it, and I think he did an excellent job. Uh, I like it. Uh, I really like it. Uh, If anybody would be interested, they're not very expensive. Right now, they're a dollar off. They're five dollars and ninety-nine cents a piece. Two dollars for shipping, so that's seven ninety-nine for this book. I have the phone number. If you want to get one, I think it would be very, uh, very advantageous to get one. Uh, I know I referred, I've referred back to it a lot of times, uh, but uh, just the information that's in it is, is really a great help. Now there is something that goes along with it, and I have them, but I don't know if they've been updated or not. I kind of think they probably had since they updated this. There were six workbooks that go along with it that uh, they're basically, they are commentaries. There's a spot in here, and I think we'll see it tonight. There's a spot in here where you read God's Word back to Him, and there's a spot in here where you read God's Word for yourself, and then we'll study it tonight, where you do certain things when you are doing that. Those workbooks, uh, I know Peggy used them. I don't know how many times she went through them. But uh, they make it very easy to do what, what the sweet hour of prayer is asking for. Uh, and they're very informative. They get you into the scripture. And, and this is one thing that, that your prayers are going to do for you if you pray the way I'm showing you in, uh, in this series that we're doing now. They will it, will, it will get you into the scripture so you will understand the scripture more. Remember, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. In other words, as we study the word of God, our faith grows if we put it to work in our lives. Our faith will, will grow. And that's, of course, that's what we, that's what we want to do. But now, if you would want if you would want this book, uh, the book, the telephone number is 1-800-289-3300. I meant to bring one tonight. Um, you'll have to say it again. The name of the book is Sweet Hour Prayer by Don DeWelt, D-E, capital W, E-L-T. Uh, I don't think there's a book number, but it's probably changed anyway since they updated it. Yeah, this one was, this one was copyrighted in 1981. It was so popular it was reprinted again in 1984. And something you probably, I don't know, you probably know this, but something that whenever, you, whenever you're getting a book, I hope you just are buying Bible book, books that 
talk about the Bible. But go online. Go to Barnes and Noble. Uh, go to whatever, what, Amazon. Hi, Debbie. Uh, Amazon or whatever some of the others are and just you'll know how to do it. Uh, go on and ask for that book and most of the time you can get a book that's just like new for very 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 cheap. Never never buy a book right off the shelf. Check to see. Now brand new books you're probably not going to get but other books, if you'll go online, uh, I, know, I always have Doug go online for me, and it's amazing the money I save uh, from going online. There's a few. You, there's a few I've try, had him try to get for me that you, you couldn't get them. People just evidently don't want to let go of them. But uh, that's a good way to do it. Okay. Any qu questions or anything right now? Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to review from last week, just in case you've missed something. Uh, that, remember, we're, we're doing a, a pie chart, and uh, we've divided an hour into 12 five-minute segments. I think I suggested last week that you start with about 10 to 15 minutes. I don't remember what I said. But it's okay if you start with an hour. But I found out that, that I had to start slow and then just keep adding to it. And after you do that, I think you'll find that an hour is not going to be enough time for you. Uh, there is one thing I noticed in this new book that I didn't like. Uh, it's okay if that's what you want to do, but I think they were asking, they were asking for to get to the point where you did an hour a week. I don't think that's near enough time. Uh, there are too many things to pray for, uh, and I'll show you some of that probably tonight. But I think I told you last week also that what I did, I used, I used this, I used the way this book is teaching for a while. But then I decided I would change it a little bit and do it my way. Of course, I, this was after a while and I found out that an hour was, was not enough time. Uh, so it's okay if you change it around, but uh, I, I think two, th two things that I believe I would leave the same as your pie chart. And that is you begin, if you'll remember, you'll begin your first, your prayer with praising God. Now, I think it's a good idea to end your prayer in praising God. If you've ever noticed... In the book of Psalms, which is a book of praise, among other things, but mainly a book of praise, a book of prayer, a book of Psalms, songs. It begins with praise to God, and then, just as you would expect it to do, over in the last part of Psalms, it ends with praising Him. I believe Psalms... I believe God ha inspired Psalms to teach us how to approach Him. And so since in the book of Psalms, of course, God didn't arrange it. God didn't arrange it. Uh, I think David probably arranged it. Uh, or Solomon. I forget which. I know, but I don't remember. And so they arranged it that way. But they arranged it after, you know, after they, they had so much time spent with God. They knew him, and that, so they arranged it that way. Uh, okay, so five minutes, 12, 12, I am so sorry, 12 segments uh, of five minutes each. 
Now, sometimes your segment is not going to take you that long. Then you can stretch it out. But like I said, start slow. Start slow and build to it as you go along. Now, remember, the first segment was praise for him or praise for God. Now, what this is, this is not saying, God, I praise, I praise you. Uh, I praise you that uh, I prayed for so-and-so and they got better. That's okay, but that's not what this spot is for. You, in this case, you would say something like, God, I praise you for your almighty power. And then I wouldn't just stop there. I would go on and I would say what I mean by that. Now, God knows he's almighty. But God wants to hear from us about how we feel about him. And, that, and if you just think about it, that must be why he asks us to pray. And in fact, commands us to pray. He doesn't really need our prayers because he knows everything. But it has to do us some good when we are talking to him. Probably the biggest thing is it's building a relationship with him. You need, I think I said last week, you need to picture him as though he's just sitting right beside you. I would picture him on the throne sitting right beside you and you're talking to him like you would sit down on your, on your daddy's lap and or your mama's lap or whoever, but you're talking to him that same way. You're building a relationship with your God and that's going to be so good for you as things go along. Uh, secondly, now, the next five minutes is praise to him. And that, that's, where, that's, where it would, that's where it would come in, where, where you would say, God, I praise you. I ask you, God, to heal someone. And God, you've done it. You've taken care of them. Everything's going fine. Discuss it with him. That's the spot that we need to get to. We don't need to just, we don't need to just have these one-liner prayers. Uh, you wouldn't, you wouldn't talk to your real father or your real. He is your, he's as real a father as you can get. But you wouldn't talk to your biological father in one-line things. You say something and then you elaborate on it, and that's what God wants to do. In fact, if you were to write, elaborate on just about every one of these five-minute. Uh, segments, then uh, you would, you'd have the, uh, the idea. So you praise him to him. First one was for him. This one's to him. And then last week, I think we ended with confession. Uh, that's so important. I can remember, I don't know if I told you this, this last week or not. I can remember in college, in psychology class, and I think I did tell you this, Joe O'Neill taught us, and I remember how important he said confession was, because confession, and it needs to be, I mean, it, 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 you need to outline it. You need to be, like with everything else, you need to elaborate on it. Dear God, you know you know I have this particular sin in my life. Uh, dear God, you know I, I'm doing some drugs. And God, I know that that's not in your plan for me. Uh, God in heaven, I, I pray that you, would, that you would take those things away. Uh, help me to be strong enough. Uh, your Holy Spirit lives in me. And I just pray that you would have your Holy Spirit work in my life. But make those confessions. I, like I started to say, I remember Joe talking. He had the statistics about some, some people that saw the importance of getting people to confess their sins. They went into mental institutions and they began to work with these people that were the patients that were in the mentalist institutions. And I forget the percentage, 
but it was amazing. The percentage of people who got well because they began to confess. They began to say, God in heaven, you know that I hate so and so. And God, I don't want to. I want to get that out of my life. I want to, I want to, uh, I want you to forgive me and I, I want you to help me to make this right. I don't know, I think some of you did. I mentioned that book, uh, None of These Diseases, where God told the Israelites when they came out of Egypt, he said, if you, if you won't commit the sins of these people, then none of the diseases, remember, all these plagues had come upon them, none of these diseases that you saw happen to the Egyptians will happen to you. If, if you would read that book along with this section, uh, you would see that whatever the sin is that we keep in our life, we just haven't gotten rid of it. That sin is ruining our whole, it's ruining our example for Christ, but it's ruining our life. You can't you can't live with sin in your, living with sin in your life is like trying to stand as close to the fires of hell as you can stand and expect to come away not smelling like smoke. Whatever sin that you have that you are not getting out of your life, it is affecting your entire life. Here's the way I like to explain it. You are never going to get any closer to God. Your faith is never going to grow any stronger than that particular sin. It's like climbing a ladder and you've become a Christian. You've begun to get these things out of your life, but there are still some of those things that you just love so much, you're, 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 you're addicted to them, whether it's tobacco, whether it's alcohol, whether it's drugs, whether it's sex, whatever it is, you're just, you've been comfortable in that sin and you're, and you're going to keep it. It's like climbing a ladder and you've, you're up here to about the sixth rung on that ladder and you're ready to take that step and step on that sixth rung and you look at it and you see that if you take that step, it's going to break and you're going to fall. You can't get any closer to God than that next rung on the ladder. If you try to keep those things in your life, you're not going to grow. You you can you can only go to some one point. And God, remember, remember when Paul said, "I am," he said, "I am a slave," and I forget where he said that but he said and he said it more than once I am a slave to the Lord now that word that word slave when Paul says that and that's what we should all be slaves to the Lord in fact unless you are a slave to the Lord you'll never be free the only way you can get free is to give everything over to Christ when you you said, when you said, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, you have taken him as your Lord. Now, let's take that word Lord for what it means when it was first written. It's saying that you take him as the sole authority, the sole author of your life. No longer is your will your own. From now on, your will is the will of Christ. You're his. He bought you with his blood. Now, you were his, first of all, through creation. But we messed up. He's so gracious. 
He has given us a way through Jesus to stop that mess up we made. Uh, sin has not become a period in our life since Jesus died for us. Uh, sin has, has just become a pause. Uh, now there is a way for us to get that behind us. By confessing these sins to him, now you know, I think I told you last week, I have a trouble, I have trouble praying out loud. All I do is yawn. But I would try with this spot in particular, I would try to say those audibly to God. And I say that because you need to hear those things coming back to yourself. This is the sin I'm holding on to. Maybe it's more than one, but this is the sin I'm holding on to. And I think it will start to make you kind of ashamed of what you're doing, and, and I believe that's good. I believe God probably wants that. We don't like to feel ashamed. I don't know how many times in the Scripture uh, especially in Psalms, David says, don't let me be ashamed, or I won't be ashamed, something like that. Uh, so, do the confession, elaborate when you're doing this. Uh, sometimes, sometimes it's kind of, it's kind of hard to say a particular sin that you are doing. Uh, God in heaven, I, I just can't help it, but when I go in Walmart, I steal something. You need to hear that come back to you. Uh, God wants you to be completely aware, and you need to tell him everything that it is. And remember this, he knows anyway. He knows anyway. So, uh, Praise for him, praise to him, and then confession. No excuses, be honest. Number four, read the word to him. By word, I mean his, his word. You read it back to him. And again, I, the only thing I know to do when I teach people is teach them what I know works. Uh, teach them the scripture and so, so many times I use myself as an example, and that's one of the first things we learned in college. Don't talk about yourself all the time. That's a mistake. But I, I want you to know I just do this so you will understand. So when it says, read the word to him, and you want to comment on what you've read. Now, let me give you a for instance, and that's why I just said what I said. Let me use an easy one. Uh, let's just read. Let's just read Acts two thirty eight to him. I would open my Bible, even if you've got it memorized. Hope you do. I would open my Bible, and I would say, "Then Peter said unto them, Repent." And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, there's a whole sermon right there. Your points are right there. I would read that to God, and then I would go back and I would, I would comment on what I've read to them. Uh, you know the story of Peter. You know how he got in this situation to be praying this prayer. I would say, God, I realize that, uh, that Peter was speaking for you. Uh, I realize that these people ask Peter and the apostles, what can we do? Uh, you know, they, they realize, they've realized now that they killed the Messiah. Now what are they going to do? So Peter, Father, Peter tells them, what to do. And Father, you, you've just been so gracious with us. 
uh, by allowing us to see this. He says repent. And then I, then I would go, I would go to that word repent, and I'd say, Father, I understand that, and if I don't understand, I'm going to look it up. I'm going to do a little bit of research here if I have to. I might have to do part of this verse today in my five minutes. I might have to finish up tomorrow, and that's okay. But, Father, I understand that uh, when he says to repent, he's saying, you must not only change, your, you must not only stop what you're doing wrong and turn around. You must not only stop what you're doing wrong, but Father, I understand that repentance is a two-headed coin. You must stop what you're doing wrong, turn around, and start doing what's right. It's not just enough to get the sin out of your life. It's you must put something in its place. I would say that God knows all this, but can you see what it's doing for you as you do this? It's teaching you some things, uh, and you'd be surprised the amount of our people that they have no idea what Acts 2.38 says. Uh, and then he says, uh, repent and be baptized. I talked to him about baptism. Uh, but here's what I understand, God. And then the same thing through the rest of that. So read the word back to him. This is where the workbooks that I was talking about come in very handy. Uh, because you've got, you've got the comments. It's going to teach you to make the comments. Uh, okay, then petition. Petition. That's the fifth segment. Uh, and I'm going to do here what, what you would do. Uh, I'm going to do here what you would do if you had a book. And Jay, they're not very expensive. The church might just want to buy those. And I'll tell you what, if they can't, just, just, just take it out of what you pay me and, and buy them. But, uh, and if I were you, if you do that, I'd buy a few extra. Because they're not, I mean, $7. You're, you're, in fact, I think the next time I order, I'm going to order some extras too. Uh, in fact, Mary's talked to a few people and told her what we're doing here with the pie chart and all. We've got a couple of other people that want them already. Uh, one preacher and one non-Christian. So maybe they'll help. Did you? I was just wondering if the $2 for the shipping is for one book. Maybe if you bought a fair one, yeah. you'd get a cheaper. I'm sure the shipping would be cheaper. Yeah. I don't think you'll buy the book any cheaper because they've already got them discounted by a dollar. So. But you, it, it's going to be $7 well spent whether the church does it or whether you do it yourself. Uh, okay. Uh, petitions. Now, remember, a petition is when you are talking to God for somebody else. You're not praying for yourself. You're praying for someone else. Let me give you some for instances. Your parents, maybe your parents are like mine. They weren't Christians. Uh, but pray for your parents. Uh, you want them to become Christians? The first thing you should be doing about it is praying that your parents will become Christians. Uh, maybe you did what I, maybe you've done what I did when I first became a Christian. Uh, I'll illustrate it like this. I grabbed all my family by the back of the neck and started pushing it down their throat. Yeah, that did some damage. I don't know if, if that damage ever got corrected. But uh, that's, not, that's not the way to do it. Uh, I, think, I think the best way, and this is a little extra, this isn't on the prayer, but uh, I think maybe one of the best ways with winning your parents is live the life in front of them. Take a stand. Keep that stand. But you've got to treat them in a way. You do everybody this way. You've got to treat them in a way without compromising that you leave the door open. Don't spit in their face. Because if you do, I don't care if you are their favorite child you're going to have trouble down the road. Pray for your parents. How about your daily bread? Today in my 
and I've changed mine around a little bit, but today in my prayers, after I get done praising God in my prayers, I uh, praise him for certain things, then I read his word uh, back to him in praise. I sing him a song in praise, and then I read a chapter out of the book of Psalms. I read two a day, but I read a chapter out of the book of Psalms, and that's to praise God, not just for who he is, but also what he does. And today in my prayers, I said, I just thought for a minute, you know, God, there are so many simple things that we just take for granted. So I, I, I prayed for living in a home that's warm, that's clean. We have electric you know, sometimes we gripe about having to do the laundry. What we should be doing is praising God that we have laundry to do. We should be praising God that we have a wash machine, or in our, like in our case, we have a wash machine and a dryer, but if her hands aren't freezing, she's outside hanging them up. Praising God that, you know, that she still goes through the trouble to hang those up. There's nothing like the smell. Of course, you don't get that smell at our house because, not in the winter when you're drying them on the line, because my, my clotheslines outside are right next to my outside furnace, and they get that wood smoke. Everybody thinks she wears perfume that's got a woodsy smell to it. But uh, uh, how about the water you drink? Just think for a minute. Some of the people, some of the people that we support in missions, same thing with the missions that you, I mean, I talked to Barry about some of the people in their water situation. It's terrible. That's why so many of them get sick and die, get typhoid and everything else. I mean, they, they can't turn on the spigot, but we can. And don't you dare take your God for granted. Thank him for that. Thank him for food. Thanking that you've got somebody that's such a good cook that uh, you can enjoy the food. Thank him. What if food, what if the food, what if what we had to eat to sustain us, it's all we had, tastes like burnt rubber. You know, I enjoy the way the food tastes. I not only enjoy the way it tastes. Is anybody here like me I like, I like certain foods because of the consistency. I love pork rinds, chickaroons, and the ones I like, I'll eat the soft ones, but the ones I like are the ones that they crunch like they were cooked three times. Uh, I, like, I like the same way with popcorn. I like the popcorn that's just a little bit burnt, but you can still bite it. There's just something, and I'm sure when they, people make different foods, like getting candy out of a candy machine or something, they thought about the crunch. Look at the candy bars that have crunch in them. They want you, they want you to get hooked on that, that crunch. So thank God that things, are, that things are that way. You've got a clean bed to get into tonight. You've got sheets and blankets to cover up with. You've probably got more than you even need. Thank him. One of the keys for God's blessings, you thank him and thank him. and You can't thank him enough for what he does for you. What's that going to do for you? Now, you're not thanking him, so he will bless you more. Although that's going to be in your mind some, and he knows your mind. But uh, if you continue to thank him, he's going to see that you're grateful. He's not, if you're an ingrate, he's not going to bless you. But if you're grateful, you watch more and more blessings come. The more you thank him, the more you get in his way, I mean on his path, the more the blessings are going to come. And let's be honest, that's what we want. We want more blessings, but we want to use them right. Uh, you've got it on your prayer list. Uh, sin for laborers. Uh, pray, pray for laborers. You've got it down here. Church of Christ laborers. That's so important. 
we are running out. Uh, we didn't put this on the prayer list, and we probably should have. How many of you know Harvey Bream? Okay, Harvey Bream at one time, when the, when the college was really straight, Harvey was the president of Cincinnati Bible Seminary. Harvey is the man when the disciples split from us, or when we split from them, and they decided they were going to take all of our properties, all of our money, everything we owned, because we had at one time supported the same missions and all, because we were together, they said that shows that we agreed with them on everything, and therefore we were one with everything, and we had no business leaving them and taking our properties, our worth, with them. Harvey Bream went to work, and not a, we didn't lose a single congregation. He did the legwork. He did the brain work. He did everything to make sure that didn't happen. And that hasn't been, that's been in my lifetime that he did that. He died Sunday. He died Sunday. We need to keep it. Harvey Bream, B-R-E-A-M, I think. Uh, might be two E's instead of an A, but uh, we need to keep that family in your prayers. Dan, notice it. Do this too. If, Debbie, can I have you dying? Uh, if, if Debbie dies tomorrow, we're going to pray for Debbie's family. But who else should we pray for when a Christian dies? We need to pray for the church. We need to pray for the congregation. There's a hole there that someone else filled, and it's empty. That needs to be in our petitions. Okay, enough there. Let me go on just, just a little bit. Next, after petitions, we're going to have our intercessory prayers. Now, when I say intercessory prayers, let me give you some examples. Intercession means we are, we are going to God on behalf of another person. That person or that something there needs for us to step in the intersection. We need to get into it and ask God to help these people. Uh, intercession involves pleading to God in prayer on behalf of someone else. For instance, the lost world. And now I will tell you this. It should be very hard for us to pray for the lost world when we're not doing anything about it. Uh, just expecting God to do it. So pray for the lost world. Pray for church commitment, for stronger faith. This eats me alive. That I, I remember when I was at Falls Mills, I don't know how many times I told them, I would say, folks, so many of you, not all of them, some of them were good Bible students, I, but I used to say, folks, so many of you know so little about the church. If, God forbid, the elders were to sell the church building and our properties here this week, some of you, and we sold it to a denomination, some of you would come here next week and become part of that denomination because you would say, this is my church. This is where I've always been. That's all they know. Not all of them, but that's all most of them know. That ought to burden our hearts. We ought to be the kind of people that are praying for true unity. I don't mean we just all come together in the same place, but we all believe the same thing. And that's healthy. 
Now, some people would say, no, you don't, you want to have a diversity. That's what's going on in this world today. Anything goes. But that's not true when it comes to the Bible. You don't want a diversity. You want to all believe the same thing. You want to be in harmony. And that needs to be part of your prayers. You need to pray for the church leadership. Uh, in your case, it would be for Jay. But you need to be praying that men would arise to the leadership. That men would step up and say, yes, I, I think the first step is being a deacon. Uh, I think the deacon is the proving ground for the elders. Uh, that's, it would be debatable, but that just happens to be what I think. But need to be praying for elders. Uh, does, God, does God think we, need to ha we should have elders in the church? Of course he does. Why does he, what did he, he says to Titus, For this cause left I thee in Crete to set things in order, and then, and I think this is part of the setting it in order, and ordain elders in every congregation. We're not doing it. We're not doing it. Uh, we need to be doing it, and I think it will start to happen if we put those kinds of things in our prayers. This is a good one for right now. And I believe, I know Steve and I are praying about this, about uh, the government and its officials, and I, I pray constantly, God, I thank you that we have asked you to intervene in government on behalf of yourself. Look at the things that are happening. Now, I, I'm not enamored with Trump, but I'm enamored that I believe with every fiber of my being that he's using him. He is using him and... Just look, look today at the Democratic Party. They shoot themselves in the foot every day, and they're smarter than that. What's happening? Here's part of my prayer. God confuse them, confound them, and I think he is. They, they are so bent on hating Trump, like I said, they shoot themselves in the foot. Can you imagine the people out here who are changing their politics because of what they did to Kavanaugh, to see people that are really willing to ruin lives. How about, uh, what's, what's the guy's name? Flint. Flynn. Is it Flynn, Steve? Yes. That man has gotten to the point where he was this close to filing bankruptcy. He's lost his house. He's lost everything he's had because these nasty liberals want their way and they're willing to do anything to get it. Pray about that. Pray about that. Pray about that and watch Hannity. You'll get your, you'll get your eyes opened. If you're watching, if you're watching NBC, CNN, ABC, uh, I don't know even whatever the rest of them are, if you're watching just about anything other then Fox News, I'd repent. Because you're getting stuff pumped into your mind that you don't need pumped in there. Uh, you need to be listening to something that's not fake news. And I can, as ignorant as I am, I can see that. Okay, let's stop right there. Uh, we will start with number seven. Next time. Now you're getting a lot extra here because I just like to talk. But I'm, I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do this. Uh, well, let me say it this way. I might have played basketball in school if the coach would have taken me under his wing and illustrated to me everything I had to do to be a basketball player. If he just treated me like a baby on a bottle, I might have done it. That's the way I learn. And I hope that's the way you learn. That you, and I'm trying to get into this to the point where it's going to be easy for you to do this. You're going to have all these ideas. I don't want to just sit down and say, okay, write this down, write this down. We do all this, and you get to the end of the course, and you say, well, I took the course. I'm going to be a prayer. <laughs> no, I want to do it. I want to, I want to give this 
example to you. J let me say this. Uh, Robert, uh, let me pray, and then I'm going to say something else, and you can turn that thing off. Father in heaven, we thank you. We praise you for Jesus. Father, we're glad you want us to pray. We know, Father, like everything else you do, it's for our own good. But, Father, help us to understand that you gave your son for us, that he paid the price of his blood for us. Help us to show enough respect to you to spend some quality time with you every day in prayer. Thank you for this congregation. Father, thank you for their strength. We ask your blessings upon each of us, Father. In Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Say